Good day, listeners and viewers, and welcome again to the Three Feet Radio Show. This is our third interview on what's been a very busy day of interviews today. And joining us will be the Melbourne Vixens co-captain in Kate Maloney. But first of all, joining me in the studio is my co-host, Luke Herbert. Good day, Luke. Good day, Ben. And i got to say, the selfish netball fan in me wanted the Suncorp Super Netball League hub that's in Queensland here and in Vicargo. I've got to say, Ben, if I was just being purely selfish, that was my wish. I'm going to be more selfish and say it would be even, be, be even better if it was in Melbourne. And joining us today is Melbourne Vixens uh, co-captain in Kate Maloney. G'day, Kate. How are you today? Hey, guys. I'm good. And it's, um, yeah, it's nice to be up here in Brisbane and be playing some netball. Absolutely it is. First of all, um, how are you enjoying hub life? Is you adapted to it all right and all going well? Yeah, we sure have. You know, I think at the start it was a bit of the unknown, but um, we're absolutely loving it. We're enjoying our time up here. and. Um, I think we're nearly eight weeks in now and it's absolutely flown by and we're just super grateful to be here and to be playing netball because we know so many back home in Melbourne um, aren't able to play sport at the moment. So we feel very grateful to be here. And just uh, mixing things up a little bit, but we were doing research for the show and on a less serious note, we found out that your favourite netball player is Natasha Chocolat. Chocolat. Can you tell us a bit about that? Just a little less serious because COVID is such a serious subject matter. <laughs> yeah, well, growing up, I I followed the Diamonds and followed the Vixens. And so Natasha Chocolate played centre. So that probably helped as well being a mid-quarter. But to be honest, um, I think the main reason was because I loved Chocolate and her last name was Chocolate. And that was sort of uh, quickly how she became my favourite player. But no, she was a great player. And um, yeah, I... As a kid, I just loved playing netball and, and watched a bit of it as well. So she was one that I followed. Just on more pressing and serious matters, Kate, it must be nice to be sitting comfortably on top of the ladder. Yeah, you never feel quite comfortable. But, um, yeah, no, look, we're, we're playing nicely at the moment. Um, it was good to get a win against the Swifts on the week, no, during the week. You know, that is hub life. You don't know what day it is. Um, it was during the week, Tuesday night. So good to get a win over them. But... Um, we definitely still took some things away from that game that we can improve on and, um, yeah, want to keep working hard to improve coming into finals time. And just as a follow-up, is there a sense that because you're in the team that's sitting top of the ladder, is there a sense that other teams are hunting wins over you? It's a bit like when you're the defending champion, teams always want to beat you, but that kind of effect. Yeah, I think, um, you know, when you're at the top of the ladder, you always have a bit of a target on your back and teams want to come out and play well against you. But for us, it's about just keep doing what we're doing, keep improving. And, um, yeah, I think so far we're playing some nice netball and hopefully we can keep building on that and getting better and better. And um, it's really tight for those that top four positions at the moment. So no matter who you're playing, they're fighting for a spot. And, uh, yeah, so there's no easy game. You've got the Melbourne Derby against Collingwood coming up on Saturday. No doubt you and the team will be particularly pumped for that. And it's unfortunate that it can't be down here in Melbourne with a big crowd at Melbourne Arena. Yeah, Ben, we, we love playing against the Magpies. We love the Melbourne uh, rivalry that we've had and that we've been able to build over the last couple of years. And um, it's always a close game when we play against the Magpies. So really looking forward to that one. They've got some new players in their team at the moment. So there's a little bit of unknown there, but... Super excited to get out on court and play against them. Obviously, we'd love to be at Melbourne Arena in front of a massive uh, Melbourne crowd. But, um, you know, we know that they're back home cheering us on and hopefully we can do our Vixens fans proud and get a win. And just speaking of the crowd, what's it like playing in front of a neutral crowd? Because is it kind of strange? Ben and I were kind of chucking this down off air because one way or another, players and fans are used to the crowds. Yeah, it is a little bit strange, but to be perfectly honest, it's better than no crowd. And we had a couple of games where there was absolutely no one uh, in the stands and it's just a weird feeling running out and it just being so quiet. So uh, it's nice just to have people there, whether they're cheering for us or not. And um, But we've had some really great support in Queensland with um, both in Brisbane and at Sunny Coast as well. So um, it's been great to have some people in the crowd and hopefully we've got some new fans on board as well. What's been the main change when it comes to game time and training loads when operating out of the hub environment? You obviously have to make a few changes there, Kate, for not just yourself, but the team as well. 
Yeah, yeah, it has been different. I think the main difference is just these midweek games. So you, you might have three games in seven days. So the majority of it is pretty much playing and recovering. There's not a whole lot of training involved in those weeks. And um, for us at the Vixens, we've loved it. You know, we love playing netball. We want to be playing matches. And so it has been good. And it's made these last uh, eight weeks absolutely fly by. But um, it will be nice to head into one game a week now. Um, off the back of it, though, it's just been literally play, recover and go again. And so the emphasis has just been on doing absolutely everything you can to make sure that you're ready to go for that next game. And what kind of things do you do for recovery? Because I think Kiwi Netball fans are more accustomed to the games and perhaps the players being close together because of the way the Andrew Trim should draw in a normal year without COVID is structured. Yeah, so for us, it's... Um, you know, play a game. The next day we'll go and do, we're lucky uh, here in Brisbane to be able to um, head down to the beach and jump in the water. So that's been good. And then physio, massage, you know, sleep is so important for us, but um, just freshening up in whatever way you can really, making sure we're eating properly and, and all of that stuff to just prepare us best um, for the next game. And sometimes it is even just about making sure that you're not overdoing it. And that's pretty easy. And uh, COVID-19, but just making sure that we're resting our legs a bit and making sure that they're as fresh as they can be for that next match. And you talk about trying to, not trying to take yourself too seriously, Kate. Have you been involved in any of the um, uh, internet sensation stuff that Joe West, Joe West and Emily Mannix have been doing? Gee, those two can dance, can't they? They can dance. I stay as far away from TikToks as I possibly can. I'm not much of a dancer, guys, but um, no, the girls are having lots of fun. Um, you know, anything to sort of keep us uh, entertained. And especially in that first two weeks when we were in that real lo heavy lockdown, it was all about games, TikToks, whatever the girls could do to keep themselves occupied. So we found some new talents within the team and Joey and Emily sure do make us laugh a fair bit. So in terms of hub life, and this is a very general question, we don't expect you know, very specific answers, but just to give us an idea, and particularly for you know, people away from it, how does it then sort of work when you're not training or playing that or preparing for the game? How do you then, are you allowed to say go for, out for coffee at a cafe? How does it actually work? Yeah, look, it kind of changes uh, all the time for us and we're sort of getting new guidelines and regulations. The first two weeks was heavy quarantine. So at the start, we weren't even allowed out on our balconies. It was sort of, you were just in your room. Um, and you only left for training and games. So going to training was, that's what you wanted to do. You wanted to go and train because it was the only time you got to go outside um, from the walk from your hotel to the bus and back again. But uh, obviously now we're outside of that two weeks and we have a little bit more freedom. So yeah, we can go out for walks, um, get some takeaway coffees and stuff like that, which is great. And um, yeah, just to be able to go outside and have fresh air and have a bit of freedom has been good. And you talk about fresh air, Kate, it must have been pretty good and still even now to be so close to the beach because Queensland is the sunny state. And I know uh, quite a few of you girls love the beach. I've been seeing them posting photos of themselves at the beach on Instagram. Yeah, look, one of the things that the girls like to do on our days off is just head down uh, to the Gold Coast or up to the sunny coast and um, jump into the water and do some recovery that way. I think it's, yeah, great to be able to get out and um, freshen up the mind, but also the body and the water. And um, yeah, another thing for us just to keep us occupied as well, which has been really good. And I know you probably can't outright answer this, but when a COVID the pandemic is over at some stage, and we don't know when that'll be, but do you think some of the sort of changes to the of routine or regime, if I might, you can put in a bit of what if you like. Do you think any of those will then stay after the pandemic? Or do you think, barring other changes to society that are brought on by the pandemic, that basically things will, in terms of training and other stuff, will go back to how it was? Yeah, I think there'll be a bit of both. I think we've definitely learned a lot um, from COVID. And I think just things, you know, little things don't matter as much anymore. If you're, you know, if, um, you're a bit late to the game or if you've forgotten something, you know, we feel like we've had so many things thrown at us this year and just to realise that, um, you know, you can get on with it and you can still go out there and perform even when things don't go exactly to plan. And I think for us, it's just been about 
um, attitude and embracing everything that's thrown at us. And that's been set from the top from Simone all the way down. I think the girls have really embraced hub life and um, I think that's really paying off for us on the court. But um, yeah, I think there definitely will be things that go back to normal, but it kind of um, COVID uh, protocols and regulations, they just feel like normal for us now at the moment, but I have to wait and see. And hopefully we're not, um, I suppose, we can get through it pretty soon and get back to our normal life. And Kate, we had the retirement of um, uh, Maddie Brown last week. Can you um, just reflect on that? You obviously played with Maddie a fair bit and um, it's sad to, it'd be sad to see her not running around on the court in future. Yeah, I think it's always um, sad to see people retire and especially people that have been around our game for so long. And um, I was lucky enough to play alongside Maddie at, probably for my first five or six years at the Vixens. And I think for me, um, you know, she was one of the best wing attacks that our games had. And um, most of the time when I was playing with Mads, I was playing at wing defence. So um, I had the honour of training against her every single day at training. And um, so, yeah, I, I feel, feel very lucky to have learned a lot um, from Mads and to be able to have played um, against her a lot at training. And, um, yeah, she definitely run rings around me a few times there. But, um, you know, you want to be... I was lucky enough to be able to train against one of the best. And just briefly, and your comments got me thinking about this, what's it like to learn off a great player like Maddie? Because you, what is it like then to be at training and that? Just, you know, I'm just curious as someone that really... You know, just really speaking as a fan for a moment, if you'll forgive me, I really enjoyed watching her as a player, regardless of the team she played for. Okay, sometimes it was bad for the teams I supported, I, I will say, but in every other aspect, I really enjoyed it. And when the ANZ Championship sort of terminated with each side of the Australians and went their own ways, it was a handful of players I had missed seeing. So upon reflection, I think she's one of them. Yeah, um, I think, you know, I was lucky enough to play with her more than I had to play against her. And I haven't played directly against her much in games, but as I said, I played a lot against her at training and um, feel very lucky that it was at training and not in games. And just to be able to, you know, to be able to put yourself at training every day up against one of the best, it, it only can help um, hopefully make you a better player as well. So I'm um, very grateful that I got to play with her for so long. All right, Kate, thanks very much for joining us today. Enjoy um, the rest of the time in the hub and um, good luck for the game against Collingwood in the All Melbourne Derby, but in Queensland on Saturday afternoon. Perfect. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Kate. See you later.